The Moving Pad Pro 14 by Wacom is a revolutionary tablet for mobile artists. Its most powerful feature, which I'll demonstrate today, is the ability to connect to a laptop or desktop. This connection allows you to leverage more robust hardware and access applications not available on Android. Conveniently, you can link to a computer using either a USB cable or a wireless connection. Let's get right into it. First, I'll give you an overview of the installation process. It's not very straightforward, but once you do the initial setup, it doesn't take much to connect your Moving Pad Pro 14 to your computer. While the process could be more elegant, it's important to understand this is a beta feature and it will get better. I recommend having a look at Wacom's online instructions so that you can go through the details at your own pace. First, you'll need to register your device to gain access to the software you install on your computer. Normally, you'd register with the Wacom Center app, but this time you will need to update the Moving Pad Pro 14 in the settings and then register through the device itself. This will open a browser window and you can log into your Wacom account or create a new one. Once registered, you can use your PC or Mac to download the Instant Pen Display software. Next, install the app on your computer and then run it. Under Settings, enable the two Auto Connect options unless you don't want to auto connect. You can also choose whether or not to run the Instant Display app on startup. Enabling these options will allow you to more quickly connect your devices, so I leave mine enabled. Back on the Moving Pad Pro 14, you'll need to enter Developer Mode. In the Settings About Pad, tap on the Build Number seven times. Locate the option to enable USB debugging. This allows your Moving Pad to communicate with your computer via USB. Next, ensure the Instant Display Mode is enabled in the settings. After that, connect a USB cable to your PC or Mac. I don't know if just any USB cable will work, but I tried a USB-C to USB-C cable that is rated for video transfer, and it worked just the same as one you'd get with a non-display Wacom tablet. Both the USB-A and C ports worked on my computer, even on a hub. You'll get faster performance with a faster USB connection though, so you may want to avoid the hub unless it's your only option. Next, initiate the connection by swiping from the top and tapping the Instant Display button. After that, you can initiate the connection in the PC or Mac app by clicking first on the Update button, then on the Connect button. We'll start with a wired connection first. Once a connection has been established, you may need to do a couple of things depending on whether you are on Mac or PC. We'll tackle those as they appear. On Mac, you'll need to grant some permissions for screen sharing and other things when they pop up. Once successfully connected, the Moving Pad Pro 14 becomes an additional display. You can extend or mirror it. You will want to adjust the display position relative to the other displays and adjust the DPI scaling since it's rather small. On Mac, you have different settings to change the resolution. Using a lower resolution will reduce the resolution available to you on the Moving Pad Pro 14, so you may want to scale it up by choosing to optimize for your internal display. Next, choose Show All Resolutions and set it as high as you like. A higher resolution makes the Mac UI much smaller, so it is sort of a trade-off between resolution and readability. You may also be able to change the scale of the UI in your art application. I'll come back to this. You should be able to use the pen on your Moving Pad Pro 14 to move your mouse cursor. Well, sort of. You are able to click on things, but the cursor does not follow the pen when you hover. Kind of annoying, but not a deal breaker. You can operate your computer just like you would with a Cintiq or other display tablet. You can also use touch to navigate. Next, open an art app to test if your pen is able to draw. I'll use Krita since it's free and available for Mac and PC. It's also available on Android, but by using it on your computer, it will work much faster. That is unless your computer is slower than the Moving Pad Pro 14. As you can see, I can draw with full pressure and the brushes are very responsive. I can paint long strokes with huge brushes and they work marvelously. This is because I'm using my powerful laptop hardware, not the mobile processor in the Moving Pad Pro 14. Let's test another app called Rebel. This is my favorite art app, so I'm excited that I can use it on my Moving Pad Pro 14. I'll go to the Preferences and increase the UI scaling to make things easier to see. In Rebel on Windows, I had to switch the tablet input to Windows Pointer to get the pen to draw on the canvas. This means I have to change it back when I return to my regular Cintiq. I didn't have this issue with Rebel on Mac, 
or with other art apps like Krita on Windows. You can see that I'm able to paint just like I can on my desktop. I can even tilt my pen to change the brush shape and other properties. Multitouch also works, but on Mac it can sometimes move the canvas off screen when I am trying to pan and zoom. When connected to Windows, Multitouch works better, but it can still experience the occasional glitch. One thing that I feel is missing is that you cannot use the pen buttons. All the buttons toggle open a menu on the side. I'll come back to what this does later. You can of course use the keyboard if you have one nearby. A Bluetooth keyboard may even work. Or you could use a shortcut controller like a Tour Box or Stream Deck. Since Instant Display is just adding a display with pen input, it doesn't offer any sort of control panel like you'd get on Windows or Mac. So you can't change the pen pressure sensitivity or any other functions. In fact, when you launch Wacom Center, the moving pad isn't even recognized. Fortunately, you can usually customize pen pressure in your art applications. In Rebel, I can tweak the sensitivity a bit. I find for my drawing style, I need to push it toward firm more than I normally would. Once I do that, the pressure control is excellent. I can easily get super thin lines and make them gradually wider. I can make tapered lines with ease. This pen makes the Apple Pencil feel like a finger in comparison. You really can't beat Wacom's Pro Pens. The only thing that feels weird is when I draw small gestures when I am connected to a Mac. For example, stippling and dabbing, or drawing small circles. The line takes a moment to appear. This happens in both Rebel and Krita, indicating it's related to the connection, not the art software. On Windows, this doesn't happen. Now that the Moving Pad Pro 14 is connected to my computer, I'd like to discuss the details of wired and wireless connections. The cable is not as cumbersome as I thought it would be, since I am so used to these display tablets having tons of bulky cables. The one I am using is thin and short. In my experience, the USB connection works great. I am sure there is some lag, but it's hardly noticeable. It's far less laggy than using the mobile hardware to render brush strokes. I could use my desktop, which is my most powerful device, but since I have a large Cintiq 27 QHD, it is kind of pointless to use it with the Moving Pad Pro 14. Plus, I want to take advantage of the portability of this tablet, so I use it with a thin, light laptop like a MacBook Air M2. I installed Amphetamine so I can keep the lid closed on the Mac and just stack it behind the Moving Pad Pro 14. Both devices are thin and light enough that I can even hold them up on an easel. I can even imagine building a case that holds both devices together. These devices combined are about half the weight of the Mobile Studio Pro 16, but definitely thicker when stacked. Considering I had to keep my Mobile Studio Pro plugged into a power bank because it would run out of battery, it's actually more portable to use the Moving Pad Pro 14 and a laptop. If you're wondering if the Moving Pad Pro 14 draws power from the laptop or desktop, it does. A higher screen brightness will drain the battery faster. The power draw is not very rapid, at least with my MacBook Air. This pairing lasts a lot longer than the Mobile Studio Pro 16. I'd estimate about 10 times longer, but I'd have to test that more precisely. Another thing I noticed compared to the Mobile Studio Pro is that this pairing of the Moving Pad Pro 14 and a MacBook is silent. The Mobile Studio Pro sounded like a jet engine. Honestly, once you have it on an easel, it feels basically the same to work in Android mode or connected to a laptop stacked behind it. There are some pros and cons to either mode, but I was able to work comfortably with both. If I were walking around the house or sitting to doodle for an evening on the couch, I'd probably just use the Android mode. But if I were doing more detail-oriented plain air paintings, then I would definitely use it with a laptop. On the computer, let's click the button to disconnect the USB connection and have a look at the wireless connection. You'll need to connect your computer and the Moving Pad Pro 14 to the same wireless network. Before using the wireless connection, I was a bit skeptical of how it would perform. Based on my experience with screen mirroring, I was expecting a ton of lag and a poor drawing experience. I was wrong. I think Wacom may be utilizing their Will technology here because the tablet is exceptionally responsive. Not as responsive as when I use the USB connection, but not far off. Considering the Android hardware is already somewhat laggy, using a wireless connection was a huge improvement. The wireless connection bypasses the Android hardware for processing the art software, so everything is virtually as responsive as it would be on your computer. 
The wireless connection is more than adequate for painting in another room or wandering around the house, but let's really put it to the test. I have a one acre yard and I was able to go to the edges of the property and still control my art app. Your range will really depend on the range of your router and the lag will be determined by your distance to the router and your internet speed. I am getting some lag with 100 megabits per second download and 40 megabits per second upload when I am far from the router, but it's still usable. If an object like a wall or garage is between you and your internet connection, then that will introduce more lag. You probably don't want to go too far away from your internet because eventually you will lose the signal. I am thoroughly impressed. Not only can I paint anywhere in my house without needing a cable, but I can even go outside. This really revolutionizes mobile painting. I can't wait to see how it evolves. You're really getting a lot of bang for your buck from this tablet because of how versatile it is. While I've only really used the Move Ink Pad Pro 14 to demonstrate art, you can do just about anything with it. Obviously, you could do other types of art like 3D, vector, or animation, but you could also edit videos, create music, and do other non-creative tasks. The only issue is that you can only stream video and not audio to the Move Ink Pad Pro 14. You can work around that by using wireless Bluetooth headphones connected to your computer, not the Moving Pad Pro 14. I haven't tried this myself, so I can't speak for whether or not it creates lag, but it should work in theory. As far as the Instant Pen Display app, it's fairly basic and mostly just facilitates the connection. You can run Instant Display as a separate app and continue using the Android OS and apps independently of each other. An on-screen menu for modifier keys can be accessed by swiping from the left or pressing a pen button. These lock on until you disable them. What would be better is to use a wireless keyboard or a shortcut controller like the Tourbox. This detracts from the portability and elegance though. As I mentioned earlier, there isn't a control panel to adjust pressure, etc., but you can customize it in each art app. And the pen buttons are not able to do anything other than trigger the modifier lock menu. In my review of the Moving Pad Pro 14, I got a lot of questions about how reliable the instant display connection is. For the USB connection, I've only had a rare glitch here and there. Sometimes you'll get a funky connection where the display mirrors, but you cannot use the pen. That's quickly fixed by restarting the Moving Pad, which only takes a matter of seconds. The wireless connection is fairly stable, but I did have it drop occasionally. There were a couple of things that affected the connection. First, I noticed when other devices were using some of the internet bandwidth, it became less reliable. Second, if I went too far from the internet router and my computer, the connection suffered. Here's how to remedy this. Choose a computer with a more powerful antenna. My laptop didn't get very good range compared to my desktop, which has two massive antennas. You can get an external antenna for a laptop or desktop. Next, choose the right internet router. Use a router that has a high bandwidth for the most stable connection and least lag. The default router I own can use up to 300 megabits per second, but it has a limited range, whereas my mesh router has one third the bandwidth, but a greater range. My internet connection is limited to 300 megabits per second, which seems to be adequate, but obviously a faster plan would make your connection to the moving pad even better. If the wireless connection fails, you may have to go to your computer to reconnect. This is sort of inconvenient if you have some distance to travel, but I doubt most people using this tablet in wireless mode are going to be very far away. If you plan on mostly using the wireless connection, it's probably best to have this connected to a laptop that's next to you. So is it reliable? For the most part, yes. You'll have to keep in mind that this is still a beta feature and it will hopefully improve with future versions. At the very least, technology will improve and this type of wireless display will become ubiquitous. Artists of the future won't need cables or to be dependent on carrying powerful hardware with them. Even with its quirks, I love that I have this option. It feels liberating since I've spent so much of my digital art career tied down to a bunch of bulk. Sure, it's a little janky, but it's like 90% awesome and 10% jank. It's totally usable and I will use the crap out of it. In conclusion, the Moving Pad Pro 14 has rocked my world. I had kind of lost my interest in mobile painting just because of how held back I felt by the Mobile Studio Pro and other things like it. But now I've dusted off my fuel diesel and I'm ready to get outside again. Just in time for winter. The Moving Pad Pro 14 easily takes the number one spot for the best mobile painting device. 
It single-handedly turned my Mobile Studio Pro and iPad Air into expensive paperweights. It's just so cool that I can turn a PC or Mac laptop into a mobile display tablet and still use it as an Android device. I hope this video was helpful. If you're planning on buying a Moving Pad Pro 14, please use my affiliate link in the description of this video. It helps me earn commission without any additional cost to you. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more digital art and drawing tablet videos.